اعوذ بالله من الشيطان العليم شر الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة الأبدية على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين So inshallah, <coughs> today is going to be our first session or first lesson of uh, Surah Yasin Tafsir of Surah Yasin uh, and uh, this is basically, basically our Tuesday sessions so every Tuesday, inshallah, we will have this session at this time. Uh, today, we are not going to go too much into the uh, analysis of the words. By the way, at night also today, we have a... <coughs> excuse me. Tonight also we have Surat Yasin, but that is grammar of Surat Yasin. So those who are interested in developing their Arabic grammar skills, uh, they can attend. We have taken this example because we recite it frequently uh, in our communities, in every event. So that's why I've chosen Surat Yasin. So even the grammatical concepts, they will be every time, they will be popping up on your face whenever you recite Surat Yasin. So Arabic grammar will become very strong. So that is why uh, every Tuesday, inshallah, uh, it, this time we'll have ladies' session, 3.30 East African time. Uh, for uh, Tafsir of Surah Yasin. We'll upload this on YouTube for those who, gents, they want to attend these sessions so they can uh, uh, check it on uh, you, YouTube um, later on. And then also, uh, and the, the other thing is that uh, at night, uh, today, Tuesday, 7.30 East African time, we will have a grammar of Surat Yasin. Arabic grammar, we'll take Surat Yasin as example and apply the grammatical rules on Surat Yasin. So inshallah, <clears throat> that is going to be our session tonight. That is for both genders, male and female. This class was requested for ladies because sometimes the ladies, uh, uh, they want to ask questions and if they are men, they feel shy. So we respect that, and uh, that is why this is only for the ladies' uh, session, so that they can ask questions freely and uh, discuss uh, uh, things properly. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, I did not have time to translate uh, uh, today's session in uh, English, but next week, inshallah, it will be there, and this uh, I will I will translate it later and send it to you. This PowerPoint presentation. So basically, <clears throat> this is the content of Surat Yasin, Muhtawa Surah. So uh, what, what, what are the themes and the, the content of Surat Yasin? First, Surat Yasin was descended in Mecca. And obviously, the way we know, uh, we can find out it's Mac Meccan Surah or Medinian Surah descended in Mecca or Medina. If it, is, it talks more about idol worshippers, atheist, uh, day of judgment, all these kind of thing, concepts which were like uh, debated in the time of the Prophet wasalam, torture of the people uh, to the believers and the, the, giving them boost to have strength and how to tolerate and to handle and not to give up. Then those kind of themes are mainly in... Uh, in Surat, uh, in, in uh, Meccan surahs. Uh, however, uh, Medina surahs, they might have sometimes similar themes, but main, main themes of Medina are establishment of the government, the wars, surahs related to the wars, uh, surahs related to the people of both, the Jews and the Christian, and all those things which were surrounded by the Prophet Wasallam in Medina. So what are the what are the contents of the if we divide the content of Surah Yasin in in in, in, in segments then also when we recite Surah Yasin uh, we know that now we are moving to this content this idea and also <clears throat> it is helpful also to memorize those who want to memorize Surah Yasin we can memorize segment by segment if you understand the theme it's very easy to memorize Surat Yasin segment by segment. So this surah is uh, surah Meccan surah, and this surah min al So um, it it has it has the theme of uh, uh, the people of Medina and how I mean people of Mecca and the surroundings of people of Mecca. 
me just uh, okay so um in general he says this is from ayatollah nasir makarim uh, ayatollah nasir makarim's enlightenment or uh, the tafsir of amthal which in urdu they have namuna or in persian namuna so this this i have taken basically for me i don't take from one tafsir i try to collect it i try to make my research and present it in a holistic way so uh, so this is this portion is from ayatollah nasir makarim and uh, Ayatollah Nasser Makarim says the content of the surah is uh, echoes the the Meccan uh, Meccan uh, circumstances and the Meccan environment, uh, which usually Meccan surahs have. So it talks about the oneness of Allah, Tawheed, Ma'ad, Day of Judgment, Wahi, Revelation, Quran, uh, because the debate was all about proving that the Islam is authentic, the words of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, are true words. Warning, glad tiding of the Akhirah, Jannat, where people will be in Jannah, people will be in Hellfire, warning of the Hellfire, glad tiding of the Jannah, and now uh, believers, they will have pleasant life. Uh, and uh, Ma'ad, resurrection, we know Surah Yasin at the end, it talks about how can this uh, fragile uh, bone, uh, which becomes uh, powder, can be recreated. So, so recreation, the day of judgment, resurrection. So all these things are like, uh, uh, so uh, no wonder Surah Yasin is called Qalb al-Quran, the heart of the Quran. So what is the, what is the purpose of the heart? The heart distributes the blood to entire body. As we will see, Surat Yasin uh, presents this kind of uh, uh, usul deen or whatever usul deen uh, is available in the Quran, if you can collect them, they can be found in Surat Yasin. You will find Nubuwat, you will find Imamat, you will find oneness of God, you will find the day of judgment, resurrection, you will find the, the prophets, prophethood, you will find the just of God, you will find. So we are going to, inshallah, uh, examine these things as we go. So the whole usul deen so Islam uh, is based and founded on usul deen and the branches, they come out from usul deen so, and every branch is related to uh, uh, usul deen They are not separated from us, like Salat. Salat is all about Tawheed, okay? And fasting, Tawheed, why do we fast for Allah? So Tawheed is, and how did we know? Because of Nubuwat and Imamat, we knew how to pray, how to offer, how to do fast, how to do Hajj. So basically the foundation of everything, even for the Salat, Zakat, it's in usul deen So basically usul deen is the heart of Islam, which uh, then the furu' comes out of it. So if usul deen is gone, uh, uh, Islam of a person dies if the person doesn't have a proper faith. In, in, the, the, in the ideology of Islamic uh, bases and principles and foundations, he's dead. So therefore, in the Quran also, uh, Surah Yasin, the mentioning of the Quran, because let's say Quran is that, that pacemaker of the heart, because Quran gives the pulses of uh, this heart where, where uh, more and more arguments and debates are being spread out to the whole uh, Islamic ideology and whole Quran. So uh, if we try to do more research, we'll find any ayat in the Quran which is related to Aqidah, it will end up into Surah Yasin. So that is why it's the heart of the Quran. Like the, this, the heart like this, yeah, heart of the Quran. Okay, so uh, wonderful. Now let's see of, of, uh, what else. Uh, so the four, uh, four main topics uh, uh, are summarized in Surah Yasin. Topic number one, he says the surah talks about the message. Go out and play outside now so that you can do your no, I don't have one. Mute your uh, mic so we don't hear the secrets. She has to learn to listen. Good. Okay. Um, I will make someone a co-host that whenever they feel that uh, somebody is uh, uh, somebody is uh, uh, forgot to mute, I uh, please mute uh, mute them, but don't mute me. Okay. 
So uh, at least this will solve the uh, unexpected uh, secrets coming out from the houses. We don't want to hear them. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, we come back to this uh, the the content. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And Subhanallah, this this week is a kind of week of the uh, we are still uh, we are still enjoying the birth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And uh, you know how Imam Hussein's mentioning is very, very powerful. That for for uh, uh, sickness, uh, Imam Hussein's mentioned for hereafter, everything, everywhere we need blessing. We have the name of Imam Hussein. Allah gave us this gift of Imam Hussein in our lives, so that we can prosper in our dunya and akhirat. So imagine how if the name of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is there. Because the surah starts with Yasin. Now our Sunni fellows, they disagree that Yasin is not the name of the Prophet wasallam. But according to the Ahadith of Ahlul Bayt, Yasin is the name of the Prophet wasallam. And as we are going to see in the tafsir of the first ayat and the second ayat, the second ayat is a, a second and third ayat. Are, are, are witness and testimony and evidence that the Yasin is from Yasin. Inna kala min al -mursalid. Yasin, you are verily sure from the messengers. So Alhamdulillah, Ahlul Bayt they enlightened us with this technique of uh, understanding of these, uh, these, uh, these ayat of the Quran, which are unknown to many other Muslims. So many other Muslims, uh, I was looking at some of the discussion, they said, no, it could be Prophet Muhammad, it could be it unknown things, we don't know what is it. But it's obvious, Imam Sadiq look at the ayat next, next ayat says Yasin, Quran al Hakim Naka. So the Yasin Qasam of the Quran, you are from this doesn't need rocket science. <laughs> but Imam Sadh al Islam enlightened us. So this is the, the week of the Prophet's Wilada, birthday of the Prophet, وسلم, the month of the birthday. And Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are blessed to uh, do the interpretation of the surah, which starts with the blessing of the name of the Prophet. And you wonder that why too much merits and too much sawab and too much reward in Surah Yasin? If name of Imam Hussein والسلام, is a blessed name, imagine the name of the source of the blessing of Imam Hussein. Who's the source of the blessing of Imam Hussein? His grandfather, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why our salawat, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, brings us blessings after blessings after blessings. So the name of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is the beauty. Is the, he was the Jamal of Hashimi, Hashimites and Jamalul Khalq, the beauty of the creation. And he is his name is also the beauty of all the names after the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, his name has so much power, spiritual power, so much power to fulfill the du'as that this is, there is nothing more cause of your du'a to be accepted than in the salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So that's why Surat Yasin, maybe because another interpretation could be because it's the heart of the Quran. Because this is the only surah which has started with the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Even Surat Muhammad, there is a surah with names Muhammad. But Muhammad is in the middle of the surah. But this is in the heart of the Quran. Like, it, it, like oh, the con concepts are there and it starts with the blessed name of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this kind of uh, thing, I think, I think I believe in God knows best. This is enough to keep Yasin the heart of the Quran because it has the heart of Islam, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's name. So anyhow, so that's why Surah Yasin, the first thing it talks about the message of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Holy Quran and the purpose of the descent of the uh, this uh, holy book uh, and uh, for the mu'mineen. <laughs> Can kindly mute. Uh, yes. So um, uh, the, this great book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, heavenly book. And it talks also about the believers and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the believers. And until the verse 11, 
until the verse 11, the theme is the Prophet ﷺ and the idol worshippers who used to hurt, mock, disturb the Prophet ﷺ. And Allah said that uh, he is going to defend you and they are not going to be able to touch you with harm uh, and that he's going to prevent you. And then uh, the, the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, another portion of Surah Yasin talks about the uh, message of the three prophets. So there is this message, Nubuwat, remember? So this is Nubuwat, and then Nubuwat, uh, uh, and Nubuwat includes the Tawheed as well, and all the components of Usul Adin, three messengers of Allah. They came to people, they invited these people to the Tawheed, Usul Adin. And they, they strive. These people were so stubborn. They would not believe in the message of these messengers. And then uh, they give an example also. Somebody who came and he was martyred, uh, martyred uh, defending the uh, message. And then there's this uh, Mi'at portion there also that this guy was resurrected in the Barzakh and uh, 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 the angels told him, enter the paradise. So, so, so there is this year after starts from the Barzakh. The, uh, the, the, that's why some of our hadith, they say if a person dies, his qiyamah starts. So resurrection starts. So this is first resurrection, which is uh, spiritual resurrection, uh, solely resurrection, resurrection. And then there is this uh, bodily resurrection, which is the part two of resurrection. <clears throat> and then number three theme will be that uh, starts from Ayah 33, uh, until ayat 44, it all talks about the concepts and the uh, ideas of uh, monotheism, uh, which are more attracting. And uh, these are also, and uh, they, they present the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The verses, the existence of Allah, the greatness of Allah. Didn't they see who created this? Didn't they see who created that? So uh, there are also signs, theory of causality has been used to indicate the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, and again, it all goes, boils down to the monotheism. So therefore, we have this uh, monotheism is continuously there. So monotheism and the message, the heart of the, the uh, Islam and the heart of the Quran, uh, which is Surat Yasin talks about these two uh, hard uh, topics of the Quran, which is the core topics of the Islam and Quran. And then <clears throat> at the end of the surah, <clears throat> it is going to come back to the same ayat, the reminder, uh, reminder of um, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no wonder this surah is considered heart of the Quran, because Quran is heart of Islam and is a Tawheed is heart of Islam. So much concepts of Tawheed, back and forth, Tawheed has been discussed in Surah Yasin. And then we have uh, uh, another la fourth session, uh, things related to Ma'ad, resurrection, as we said, and different arguments related to resurrection and how People will be questions and how they'll be walking on the Sirat. There are people they'll be, uh, be walking on the Sirat and they'll be blind and they'll fall down. So topics related to the resurrection also are discussed here. Now for me, uh, to help those people who like to memorize Surat Yasin, and trust me, try to memorize Surat Yasin. It has wonders. If you have any serious problem, serious difficulty, you're not able to get out of that and it's taking too much time, uh, promise Allah that inshallah, ya Allah, if you relieve me from this difficulty, I will memorize Surah Yasin. Because once you are, your mind is preoccupied with difficulty, you will not be able to memorize. Sometimes you forget a lot of issues. So once your thing is done, you are in peace of mind, start memorizing Surah Yasin. So if, if you want to memorize Surah Yasin topic-wise, which is the easiest way because you will you you would have understood the meanings of Surah Yasin and the themes. So I have I have these are uneven segments, but they can help you memorize Surah Yasin easily uh, due to the the the, the topics uh, in a way they are presented. So for example, uh, if you want to memorize, you can start memorizing from one to twelve. Now you can't memorize one to twelve. 
memorize, divide them one to six and seven to 12. Can't like that every day memorize. So, but let your plan be that once you finish this, you let somebody listen to your 12 ayat, okay? So you let somebody listen to your 12 ayat, that means 12 ayat done. And then after that, at the end, you will, you will recite Surah Yasin out of your heart by linking these segments. What I know, I know this segment is first. <clears throat> this segment is second. This cannot be there from now because this segment has come later. So I, 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 I need to go back. So this segment wise, like memorizing short, short surahs. That is the best way to memorize a big surah. Divide the big surah into short, short segments. You can't 10 ayat, five ayat. You can't five ayat, three ayat. Make surah yasin, how many? 83 ayat, divide 83, how many? Uh, how many uh, 83s you will get? Uh, where's the calculator? So 83 divided by three, uh, 27. 27 short surahs. That means in 27 days, you will be able to memorize 27 segments of Surah Yasin. Each segment has three ayat. That's not too difficult. To memorize three ayat per day, it is not difficult. You can let your children memorize it like that. You see? The children, they can easily memorize Surah Yasin if you every day you give them three, three ayat, which is not a big deal. So uh, 27, 27 days. Maybe in this holy month of Ramadan, I'll do this children program to make them memorize Surah Yasin in the holy month of Ramadan by three, three, three ayat like that. So <clears throat> we come back to this. So this is the way I divided. You can divide in another way, but I have divided in a meaning, meaning, meaning wise segment. So the first, from 1 to 12, uh, it talks about the um, uh, theme of the faithful and the rejectors, like mushrikeen of Mecca. So the Meccan and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it will be nice that I uh, just fix this, uh, Surah Yasin. The, uh, let me just try to fix this. Oops. Okay. Yeah. So it will be nice, uh, um, yeah, Surah Yasin. Uh, we will have struggle of uh, the Prophet with the Meccans. Okay. So this is the first. Uh, so how the faithful, uh, the theme of the faithful and the rejectors. Uh, so there are two types of people: those who believe and those who reject. So this can be the first segment. And 12, subhanAllah, it, it also echoes the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The 12th ayat talks about the imamat. The struggle of the Prophet, 23 years, and then the day of Ghadir, one ayat, one day of Ghadir, obviously the Prophet presented the imamat, but this was publicly. So the imamat is on the 12. Everything we have after the Prophet وسلم, everything is in the uh, everything will be in the uh, uh, in the imamat of the Prophet. So the whole nubuwat is going to be inside the uh, imamat of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. So therefore the nubuwat is going to continue. The struggle of the nubuwat is going to continue. Uh, uh, with the imamat. So the imamat is going to struggle as well, the nubuwat. But there's a guide. We call everything. Yes, Quran also has the same thing. And some people, they have different interpretation. But according to school of Ahl al-Bayt, Imam Ali says, Wallahi, by God, I am the imam in Mubin. I am that imam, the obvious imam, clear imam, <laughs> you see? Obvious, Mubin is clear, obvious. So why can't you recognize me? Is it too difficult? Are you blind? Subhanallah. Imam Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam, they murdered him, butchered him, and he kept telling him, am I not, am I not, am I not, am I not? This is the blindness. And Surah Yasin talks about the blindness of the heart as well, that how the blindness of the heart keeps the people uh, from, pre prevents the people from understanding the obvious, obvious things Obvious miracle Quran, obvious uh, existence of God is obvious. Imamat of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib is obvious. The ideology of Imamat is obvious. Subhanallah, how the blindness of heart 
could keep somebody away from understanding the obvious of the obviousness of uh, certain obvious concepts. Anyhow, so uh, so therefore, uh, one to twelve, nubuwat, struggle of nubuwat, and then the imamat. Then after twelve, the story of uh, imam facing two types of people. Uh, story of the uh, the prophet. I'm going to uh, just uh, change here the story of prophets or the successors. Okay, why? Uh, because these three messengers, which were sent to uh, to people of Antakya in uh, Turkey, at the border of Turkey and Syria, this is where they were sent. So these people, they were sent by prophets. If arsalna ilayhum with name, fakadabuhuma. Okay, and you know these prophets were successors of Prophet Isa alayhi salatu According to uh, many narrations, these were successors after Prophet Isa. Prophet Isa made 12 successors. So it includes the concept of imamat, the concept of uh, successorship, authority after the, the, the main Hazrat Isa, Prophet Isa, Jesus alayhi salatu the messenger, the great messenger of God. He had 12 messengers, 12 prophets, 12 disciples, 12 imams according to uh, our uh, concept of successorship. So that's why Imam in Mubin, and then Allah gives us example of those who are prophets and successors of a great prophet. So they were facing two types of people, follower and rejecters. So that means rejecters, no matter how many prophets they will come, uh, even we said Imam Hussein Ali Sam told them, Imam Ali told them, blindness will be there. They will not accept. So these stubborn people, they would not accept the message of the Prophet Isa Ali Salatu through these successors. No, they, they are stubborn, hard-headed. But the signs, the miracles they did, they did miracles. They cured because the miracles which Prophet Isa Ali Salam had, successor had. Now people, they doubt, how can Imam Hussein alayhi salam had this power of miracle? He's not a Nabi, he's not a, well, he's a successor of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He's the warith, he's the inheritor. These successors, they were successors of Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasallam. They had same miracles which Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasallam performed. Jesus performed. So now, why can't Imam Hussein, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib and our Imams Ali Musallam, they are successors of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam according to us, appointed by God. If other than Shias, they doubt, it's okay, we understand. But for the Shias, aren't they appointed? Aren't they appointed by God? How can you doubt in the power of performing miracles? Because of the, of whatever Prophet had, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they had. Imam Ali al had. So therefore, there is a kind of uh, similarity for the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his successors and their struggle with the Prophet Isa Alaihi Salatu Wasallam and his successor and struggle. So they're hard-headed people. They want you to kill these days. They saw the miracles. They want to kill. They want to murder uh, these uh, messengers. We are going to... Uh, be, uh, throw the hell out of you, the stones, be, 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 be stone you guys. Okay, we are going to finish you. That was the death penalty for those who would uh, apostate in that time or reject the religion of the people of Antakya. So, uh, Antitok, which is in Turkey. So, uh, that is a group, majority people, they brag some types about the majority. The majority were went to hell, as we are going to see in Surah Yasin. Majority. There was one guy, minority, he went to paradise. Okay, so this is the, another theme from 12 to 32. You have the story of, um, story of, and stories are easy to be memorized. So that's why, again, 12, 12 to 12, 32, there are so many ayat, there are about uh, uh, 20 ayat, no problem. Divide them into three, three, three ayat, two, two, or four, four ayat. Divide them like that, okay, and then memorize this segment. After you're done with this segment, let somebody else hear your segment. So this, this segment tells you about the struggles of the Prophet and their successors, and how there are majority, they could reject 
and they, they are hell bent to murder the uh, chosen ones of God. And how there are few minority like Ansarani Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Habib al Najjar. No, no matter what happens, I'm not going to uh, leave defending these messengers. And they killed him. They killed him. He became martyr. Immediately it was to enter paradise. So that is that is another theme. So uh, um, no matter how many messengers come to them, they would reject and fight. The believer would not leave the faith no matter how threatening the conditions were. Then we have signs of God. Signs of God, signs of God. So this is also easily memorized because you are going to memorize, understand the, the wonders around you because most of the signs you, you will see Surat Yasin, yes, yes. Uh, sun, moon, stars, this, grass, food, everything is around me. To try to put one, one fruit in front of you, one, one uh, vegetable object in front of you and memorize this segment, 33 to 46. Okay, again, seven and six, um, for 13 ayat, no problem. Memorize it like segments, the three, three, three ayat. After the signs of God, the arguments of reject rejectors. There's a debate also in Surah Yasin. These are 47 to 50, about four ayat, easily to be memorized. And then the day of judgment, 51 to 54. Who resurrected us? So the resurrection comes, Ma'ad. And you can just follow up how the resurrection, uh, uh, the, the, the communication happens and people who are resurrected, how they are resurrected. And then from 51 to 54, again, uh, four, three ayat, the day of judgment. And then uh, people of paradise, uh, people of paradise from 55, 58, easy. Just picture this, understand these things, memorize this segment. And then 59 to 50, 68, the criminals, wow. Why people of paradise only three ayat, like four ayat, and criminals about nine ayat? <laughs> Obviously, because people of paradise are few. So, and people, uh, people of hellfire are many. The criminals are many, majority, as, as, as we saw in the Surah Yasin. So it does not talk about the, 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 what happened to Habib al Najjar. He was martyred. And people of Antakya, they were wiped out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a sound wave, destroyed them. So they are destroyed now. Both Now they are here on the Day of Judgment. So Habib al Najjar is an example of those people who are enjoying the paradise. These people were wiped out by the sound from the sky, heaven. These people are now, they were more. So now we have to talk more about the criminals and what the, are the consequences uh, they are facing. And finally, from 69 to 83. Yes, there are about uh, uh, 14 ayat, according to the 14 masumin, remember? You can divide it, 333. Three. These are talking about, again, the arguments of the nubuat and resurrection. So again, signs did, uh, who uh, that created you things to care, um, ride on and uh, uh, you are uh, getting uh, benefits from these things. And then the guy comes and says, oh, Muhammad, who can uh, bring this uh, fragile bone get, that can be, become powder back to life. So the whole argument, intellectual arguments are used here. Intellectual, Allah teaches us how to use logic and how to use intellect. So these are the themes I divided it based on the segments. And these themes will make you, if you, in case you have trouble, and most of the moment nowadays, they have troubles and struggles and un unsolvable problems. So if you make another that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, if you, if you help me in my serious crisis, which is unsolvable, I've been for months and years, I've been struggling. So Allah will help you out. I have tried it, many people have tried it. And then, and I started memorizing Surah Yasin, but I memorized it page by page, okay, the eight pages. Uh, but I have forgotten some, so I have to review. I don't want to wait a problem to let me re-memorize re re it. I want to memorize it so that Allah keeps the problems and difficulties away from me. So uh, so, I, so this time I'm, I'll memorize it in this way, so I'll never be able to forget. So this is basically, I would like to do like that. You might have a different way, different method. Think about it. Make Choose a method which will make uh, your memorization easy. And even if you have no trouble and no struggle, 
memorizing Surah Yasin is going to help you all. It's going to become your heart on the day of judgment. It's going to be in your heart. So all the challenges and difficulties are going to be, they're going to swoop away. Okay? As you are going to be resurrected, difficulties away. Why? Because you have Surah Yasin. Why? Because you have this name of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Surah in, the, in your heart. The heart of the Quran is inside you. So nothing will harm you as according to a, a hadith of Ahl al-Bayt It is one of the best surahs. In fact, the best surah recited for the marhumin. For us, when we become marhumin, let's, let's, maybe some somebody might not recite upon us when we die and join Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after long life in this world in his worship and serving him in health and wealth and uh, safety or security of Iman. Then let us let us recite for ourselves and not depend on others reciting reciting as Marapur Surah Yasin Hajar Vakat Parjo this and that Subhanallah Surah Yasin is very, so powerful. Some people they did not do nether. They said, Ya Allah, solve my problem. I am going to recite one thousand times Surah Yasin, and they did one thousand times Surah Yasin. Their problem was solved. Some people one hundred times. Some people uh, so so so. And some people, as I said, another idea. So let's see. Okay. So this is a theme, how this we are going to go in tafsir, inshallah. Our tafsir is going to be according to this. And every week, when we do tafsir of the uh, three, four ayah, try to memorize them. Because it's fresh, you know, in your mind. You just, uh, you just heard me, and now you can memorize it. So these sessions are going to help you, inshallah, memorize Surah Yasin. And I think mostly it's going to be 27 to 30 sessions, inshallah. But let's enjoy it because we, we every week we recite. So you will remember, oh, Atu Maulana Ham Ketata, Neula Ketata, and he was mentioning this and that. So uh, that it, will, it, will, it, will, it, will, it will be connecting to your life, this Surat Yasin, and it will help you uh, in the year after in this dunya as well. So now, again, as I said, I, I was not able to take... Uh, now, the cause of the descent, the cause of the descent, uh, let me tell you one thing, Asbab in Nuzul. Many times we are too much talking about Asbab in Nuzul, okay? The Asbab in Nuzul issue is an issue in school of Ahlul Bayt, because most of this Asbab in Nuzul, which we are going to mention, because they are there as a probability, they're not narrated by authentic narrations. And most of them are from the school of companion and narrated by unlinked narrations to them as well. So to them, many of these are unlinked. Some of them, they are linked. But those who narrate, we, uh, we, 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 we don't have any authenticity for those narrators. Okay, We respect them. We respect them and appreciate them. We mention those. Even Abu Huraira, if mentions me, Abu Huraira to us is a, not a reliable narrator in the school of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. Uh, because he was in the camp of Muawiyah and a lot of other historical issues. So we cannot take hadith from Muawiyah, Abu Huraira. We respect our Sunni fellows if they want to take from them, that's fine. Uh, and we take some of these to present a probability. Because Abu Huraira, he said some things which are also we, uh, a school of Ahlul Bayt, our Imams said it. So there are, there are hadith which are not narrated by our imams. So we check if Abu Huraira said something which our imam has said, then that was authentic hadith of Abu Huraira. So we don't reject Abu Huraira totally. No, we, we verify the content of Abu Huraira with our imam's content. So if our imams have said something like that, we will take the content of Abu Huraira. If not, we will not take and we'll consider it a probability. Maybe if, uh, that author might be, uh, that narration might be authentic, but not. But if Abu Huraira has narrated fabricated narrations, as it is there, you will smell the smell of fabrication. Oh, this is impossible. This can never be by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are a, a lot of weird hadith narrated by Abu and in Sahih books, unfortunately. And that's why there are people, they make cartoons out of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the uh, hadith of uh, Abu Huraira and all these hadith which are in Sahih books. We have some weird fishy hadith as well in our books, to be frank. But we don't call our books Sahih. Every single hadith is subject, subjected to authentication. Every single. So alhamdulillah, we are safe. Intellectually, academically, we are safe. 
But our Sunni fellows, they are not safe because any outsider can come. Oh, you Muslims, they say like this, this, this. That Prophet did this and Prophet was dancing and Prophet was uh, carrying his wife on her, on her, on Audhu Billah, these kind of things. And uh, this is unacceptable, unacceptable. So, so therefore, either they need to remove the word Sahih from the Bukhari or to remove those Ahadith from the Sahih Bukhari, which they used to mock the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anyhow, let's come back to the, the so, uh, so I have taken some of the uh, Asbab in Nuzul, cause of descent. Asbab in Nuzul means cause, why was this descended? When was, uh, what, what, what was the reason? What was the cause of the descent? So, so I have to be our, our ulamas like Allama Taba Tabai and all, all of them they take from the Sunni books of Asbab in Nuzul. We have Asbab in Nuzul, very few. So that's why school of Ahlul Bayt, they are not so peculiar about Asbab in Nuzul because it doesn't affect, because Quran is for the, until the day of judgment. So regardless on, on whom it was descended and why it was, this, uh, what was the cause, the cause may be repeated. The content of the Quran is applicable until the day of judgment. So I, I, I don't need to know why it was descended, on whom it was descended. I need to know what, on what the content is applied on whom the content is applied. I need to know more general things of the Quran rather than knowing more specific. Yes, more specific I need to know in the case of Imamat of Ahlul Bayt, Ali Musallat Wasam, Imamat of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, Ghadir, and that is narrated in Aswab in Nuzul in the Sunni books and in the Shia books. So, so, so those things which are very strong Aswab in Nuzul, things which have been descended on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Ahlul Bayt Ali Musallat Wasam, like Ayatul Tathir, these are, these are affecting the concept of Imamat. So yes, we as school of Ahlul Bayt Ali Musallat Wasam, anything, any Sabab Nuzul, which has direct relation with the, with the, with the Ahlul Bayt Ali Musallat Wasam, and their authority after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and their infallibility, and their purity, yes, that is of course the core issue, core Asbab Nuzul of school of Ahlul Bayt. That is why school of Ahlul Bayt and the Shias are there on the face of the earth to defend the authority of Ahlul Bayt from being forgotten or from being wiped out from the history, which many have attempted and tried to do that. But they have failed because we have not allowed them to, uh, to, 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 to get succeeded in their, uh, in their attempts to wipe out the authority and the concepts of authority of Ahlul Bayt from the Quran, these hadith of Asbab in Nuzul. So those Asbab in Nuzul, yes, I am interested. Other than that, which are general, like Humazat and Lumaza, backbiters, ah, it was Asim bin Wa'il, this, that, I don't care, Umayyah bin Khalaf, they're gone, you see. I need to know, can I apply this backbiters, uh, Jahannam, <laughs> Hutama, they're going to end up, can I apply it nowadays? That is what is my interest. So this is where Asbab in Nuzul are, uh, are important in certain area, area of authority of Ahlul Bayt, and all the other areas, it are, it, these are more general and gives me more insight about to understand the ayat more betterly. But as I mentioned, the Quran is until the day of judgment and authority of Ahlul Bayt is until the day of judgment. So basically, Asbab in Nuzul related to Ahlul Bayt are basically applicable in every time because every time the she material of Ahlul Bayt, the hadith of Ahlul Bayt are there. So should I take or not take? Yes, indeed you have to take because they have been appointed by God. How do I know? Because of the Asbab in Nuzul. You see? So that is how it works. So I'm going to, and Surah Yasin doesn't have so many Asbab in Nuzul. Even the Sunni brothers, they don't have Asbab in Nuzul, except for three ayat, which I'm going to mention, inshallah, if not today, next week, because my time is running and I need to uh, conclude soon. So, Surah Yasin was descended in Makkah, okay, before the migration. So, it is a Meccan surah, descended on our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was settled in Makkah. How many ayat are there? Uh, 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 the, the number of the ayat, 83 ayat. 83, the sequence, as you know, the sequence, the majority of the sequence is okay, but some sequence, there is a difference between the scholars about the sequence of some of the surahs shuffled back and forth through the history. 
So doesn't that cause the alteration of the Quran? No. Because the Prophet ﷺ presented the Quran, the whole text of the Quran, the codex of the Quran, that is very, very important. There has been no alteration. Yes, people, they recite it differently due to the different dialects and different ways of uh, reciting. And that's a historical issue. But the original codex is same because they did not have these dots and uh, all these kind of thing. The, they had memorized the Quran. So according to the memorization, they started putting dots and patha and dhamma and kasra and these signs of vowels. And then after some time, people, they had this text without the, uh, without the dots. They had a different way of reciting them. So basically, these odd recitations are not something which we observe because Imam Sadiq said, kama qara an -nas. read as the people read that majority. So why, why majority here is important? Because if one person can mess up in the recitation of the Quran, hundreds will pop up. No, 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 that's not right, that's not right, that's not right, this is the way right. So this, in this, the majority concept of the memorization of the Quran is important because the Quran was secured by the majority of the recitation, reciters from the time of the Prophet wasalam, when the written copies of the Quran were very few. One of them was copy of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. One copy, the Sunni brothers, they say Aisha had one copy, um, Hafsa had one copy. So therefore, there were several copies according to the Shia Sunni, they were written in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam secured. So there is no doubt what happened in the time of Uthman, it was, he was try, trying to collect the scattered one and remove, eliminate the, 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 the copies which were not considered from the Quran. But whatever was of the Quran, he secured it. That's what he did. He did not compile. Quran was compiled according to the Aisha and Hafsa's codex and Imam Ali's codex. These books were there. So that means the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left a book compiled not uh, scattered that Uthman had to collect it later or no. So what Uthman did eliminated things which were not according to the ver memorized version because memorized version was the authentic version because thousand, thousands had memorized it. So therefore, some say uh, uh, that the sequence is uh, not 36, uh, uh, the, now 36, the majority. So we take the majority because that was the way presented by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Surah Yasin was descended after the descent of Surah Al-Jinn. So, so the, the, the sequence of descent is different than the sequence how the, it was compiled or how it was sequenced uh, uh, by Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib or by the companions. So the, 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 the presentation of the sequence may be, the presentation of the sequence may be different. However, however, the, 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 the sequence of descent is different. So for example, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, Surah Al-Alaq was the first descendant. Then so on. So in Quran, you see Meccan, Medina, Medina and Meccan is mixed up, shuffled. So Quran was descended in sequence, and then the Prophet finalized it in a codex in another sequence. So it, this surah was descended after Surah Al-Jinn. In the Quran, it is in a different location. So who made this? Some say companions made it. We believe that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them to put this surah first, put this surah first, and then the companions, they told the people, you see, that's why Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib والسلام, accepted uh, most of that. B because if there was a problem, Imam Ali would never accept whatever companions say with regards to the Quran because Imam Ali rejected the Khilafat, rejected the issues, a lot of core issues Imam Ali rejected from them and protested academically and politely. So therefore, uh, if there was a problem in the sequence, the sequence was not kept by the Prophet والسلام, the way we have now, uh, Imam Ali or our Aimas would have spoken it strongly. So, so there is a there is a sequence of descent, how it was descended by the times and circumstances and place, and then how it was collected in a sequence. Uh, and Imam Ali Ali some approved it. That means the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had presented it because Imam Ali would never ever take anything which Sahaba would initiate. He would always go back to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, Rasulullah said this, 
I'm going to follow Rasulullah. Even when Uthman uh, uh, was killed, uh, they came to, to ask Imam Ali, are you going to follow the lifestyle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the lifestyle of Abu Bakr and Omar? He said, no, 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 no. no. I'm going to follow the lifestyle of Prophet Quran and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and whatever I need, I will deduce. But I will not follow Abu Bakr and Omar's deductions. No, 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 no. I will follow my own deductions from the Quran and from the lifestyle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if this sequence was something problematic, Imam Ali would have spoken and he's, he had four years of his freedom where he could uh, tell, do whatever he want in the core issues. He spoke about the Khilaf and Khutbat al-Shakh So, let's uh, take uh, one more, uh, this Sabah bin Nazul, and end our session. I was planning to do the merits. Fadail, how great Fadail, how great rewards are there in the Surah Yasin. But that, inshallah, <coughs> we are going to do next week, and we'll start then from next week, the ayat of the Surah Yasin, bin ta'ala. So, what is this Asbah bin Nazul? So basically, this the our scholars they mention some of these, uh, and these are from the Sunni books, obviously. And as I mentioned, that uh, the may, that's why this is Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not Wa Alihi Wasallam. So that shows you that this is uh, taken from, and and that's why we are not uh, stubborn not to take from. No, we'll take it as a probability. This might have happened, and God knows the best. You see, uh, as long as the content is not contradicting and conflicting. So uh, this ayat, Surah Yasin, Yasin wal Quran al Hakim, until wasawaun alaim and dartum amlam tundurum la yuminun. From the beginning till uh, they, 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 it doesn't going to make any effect whether you want them, O Muhammad, or you don't want them. They are Imam Hussein did alayhi salam and they murdered him and butchered him. Imam Ali did, they fought him. So, so obviously Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was on the top of these struggles and challenges that people would not believe him. You warn them, they are not going to. Then why, why am I warning? For the day of judgment. So if on the day of judgment, they are going to be grilled. Okay. And they can say, God, we did not know. You did not know. There was a warner, he warned. In this world, it's not going to help them. These people, the stubborn ones, they are never going to believe, like Imam Hussein's time. But then they can't say on the day of judgment, oh, we, God, we did not know Hussein was your uh, authority. Hussein was the grandson of Prophet Hussein. Was the... No, no, no. So the warnings are there for them to be grilled and mishkaki on the day of judgment. So they don't say, oh, so this is the stubborn ones will never. So what, when was this descended? So it is said that um, one day, the Prophet Sallallahu was reciting Surah to Sajda. And he was reciting it publicly. So you know, like people of Quraysh, uh, the idol worship was evil. They stood up to silence him. Shut up, silent, na'udhu billah, okay? The Prophet continued recitation, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. That's why we have also freedom of speech and expression. They don't like our freedom of speech. They don't like us to practice our amendment. I don't know, first or second amendment. So they don't want us to, uh, for them, it's okay to mock. But when we speak about Islam, no. Freedom of expression, no. For Muslims, there's no freedom of expression or freedom of speech. <clears throat> so, all of them, they got together around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay, uh, to do that. The, what happened? So this group, they stood up to silence the Prophet, to stop the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What this group, their hands became like this, stuck. They could not move. Now like this, or like this, or like this, this is on a neck, this is neck. How the hands were, I, I, I don't know how to animate it. I wish I could animate it properly, but I can give you probably animation, probably, probably anima animated. So it could be like this, you know, it could be like this, we can't move. Or it could be like this. However, the hands, this old hand, however, this hand, this hand, their hands got collected, piled around their necks. 
وقد عميت أبصارهم and they became blind they could not see فبدأوا يستنجدون برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Oh Muhammad help us help us help us they started seeking help Muhammad please help us please help us who told you to mess up with Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم who told you to mock so these mockers they are going to see similar and worse things so that of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Look at the beauty of our beloved Prophet. If I was in that place, no, to hell with you guys. Stay stuck. I would have let them torture for five, six days at least and then come and do dua. And that's why I'm not a prophet and that's why I'm not a messenger of God. Allah chooses the right people. That is the Mustafa, the chosen one. So look what happened. He did dua for them. Ya Rasulullah, these crazy people, you're doing dua for them. No. Rahmatan lil alameen. I wish these mocking people, they know this thing about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, they will take the cartoons which are in the Sahih, but this is also Sunni narrates. Why don't you take this one as well? Okay? No, they want to take the negative things because they are negative. فَدَعَ لَهُمْ حَتَّى زَالَ مَا بِهِمْ Rasulullah, Ya Allah, relieve them. So, you could see and then... And they were released, they, were get, they got trapped with their hands and necks. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended this ayat which has this neck and the uh, thing. We are going to talk about that. But did somebody believe? None. None. No one believed. Oh my goodness. Another, uh, the, then. So this eight and ninth ayat, we kept on their necks chains, okay, chains. So this they they mention that uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kana Abu Jahl yatawaad عندما يرى النبي لا يفعلنا وفعلنا. Whenever the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will pass by Abu Jahl, the arch enemy of Islam, I'm going to by God, I'm going by Muhabbal, by Lot, by by the idols, I'm going to do this to you, Muhammad. I'm going to do this to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have kept chains on your necks, okay? And we have blinded your eyes. So uh, whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, would be in front of them, they would not be able to do anything. فَكَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَقِفُ أَمَامًا The Prophet would come and stand in front of him, Abu Jahl. He could not see him because Allah would blind them from seeing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to harm them. I've also kept the reference uh, of the uh, Sunni book here. And finally, we take this Sabah bin Nuzul and we are done with our session today. Inna nuhi al-mawta wa naktubu ma qaddamu wa atharahum wa kulla shayin ahsaynahu fi imam al-mubin. Imam al-Sadiq says, Imam Ali says, I am by God the imam al-mubin, obvious imam. Sunni narrators, they narrate this hadith. When, when, why, why, why was this descended? So this is a tribe of Banu Salama. فَقَدْ أَرَادَ بَنُو سَلَمَ الْإِنْتِقَالِ مِنْ مَنَازِلِمْ إِنَا مَلَانِ They used to live far away. Okay? Far away. But they used to love the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They used to love the masjid. So they came closer. They left their home. Nowadays, people, they live beside the masjid. They go far away from the masjid. Look at the irony. Nowadays, I know before 10 years, in United States, in United Kingdom, whenever our Islamic center is, people will try to buy, Mominin will buy the houses beside the Islamic center. It's closer. Nowadays, no, it's a strange thing. No, the value is down. Imam Bargana Bajuma, Gharni value, kya hai future man. What will be the value in front of the mosque, in a house in front of the mosque, house in front of our Shia, I have heard them say, Sheikh, no, there's no resale value for this house. This all Muslims are here, then who will buy a house from me in a good price? Let me buy somewhere far away. I will get good price when I said dunya, dunya, dunya. This is dunya and akhirat. Be the neighbor of the masjid. Our elders, until now, the middle aged people, they are like that. But this new generation, too much paisa, paisa, paisa. So I'm surprised. I'm telling them, come close to the masjid. No, Sheikh, I said, there's no houses. I said, there are houses for sale now. No. <laughs> they are expensive. I'm saying they're cheap. No wonder they're cheap because they don't have a resale value. You want us to buy houses and then uh, when we want to sell, it will be lost. Why do you want to even think of selling a house beside Islamic Center? So these people, they, they were living far away. 
So they decided to uh, to to stay beside the masjid, Manaz al Qariba. So the so they they question in some other narration, Ya Rasulullah. Is this all noted? Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this. We love Allah. We come to the masjid. We have houses beside the masjid. Will this be noticeable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that all whatever you do, everything you do is recorded. Okay? Inna so whatever good deeds you do, your, your, your deeds are recorded in your house. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended this ayat. So this is uh, Asbab al-Nuzul, uh, the famous book of Ahl sunnah in Asbab al-Nuzul. Uh, again, it is a bit uh, not clear, uh, but anyhow, it's a probability. And then we will next week, inshallah, we will look how much thawab there is Surah Yasin. I have not seen a hadith in the book of Sunnis, in the book of Shias. They, they, they give the so abundant reward of Surah Yasin uh, in a way to any other surahs, like Surah Yasin, subhanAllah. Is it? There are very few surahs that had, like Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Qul Huwa Allah, Qul Allah, Surah Yasin. Inshallah, we will <coughs> continue uh, next week, bidnillahi ta'ala, uh, in our tafsir session of Surah Yasin. I was told one hour, one hour, because some of you have commitment, and also uh, it's good to not to exceed one hour. Uh, but uh, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And inshallah, we are going to uh, get the rewards. It's very important to, 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 I know you all know, you all love these rewards, but it is good for you to educate others as well. And then we'll take the start, the first ayat of Surah Yasin, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. And as I mentioned, my tafsir uh, concept is holistic concept. So I take tafsir of Quran, bil Quran, tafsir of hadith. We, we try to put all the probabilities there and enjoy the ocean, swimming inside the ocean of the Quran. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts our a'mal and gives the, us the inspiration to memorize Surah Yasin and uh, teach others as well. So please, when you memorize, teach others, you'll never forget it. And three, three ayat. What is three, three ayat for you? Inshallah, wa akhiru da'wan, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al